Welcome or welcome back to our channel. Today is part one of our guinea fowl farming preparations. So in this video, Mike is going to be giving you all the details, full step-by-step -step details on exactly how he built the coop for the guinea fowl that we are anticipating this spring. So this is what the coop looks like as of right now. If you're someone who has been wanting to build your own coop for guinea fowl or even just for chickens, he will be giving all the specifics of how he designed and created ours. We will be filming the part two here very soon where we finish the coop, show you the final steps, and if all goes smoothly, or even if it doesn't go smoothly, we plan to show you when we bring the guinea fowl here to the farm for the very first time. So right now it's February, spring is not at all that far away, but the footage that you see is from September, hence the t-shirts and the shorts, because as I mentioned previously, we were forced to take a bit of a break from YouTube. Long story short, what had happened was a little three-year-old girl who will not be named, decided to get into her mommy's things, decided to take her laptop and decided to give it a bath. And that is why this video is a little bit delayed. Plus we had a lot of issues while we were attempting to film this video. So you're definitely gonna wanna stick around to catch some of those special bloopers that are included at the end. Uh, it's a 12 foot by 12 foot perimeter and uh, walls are gonna be nine foot in the front, seven foot in the back. It's just gonna be a lean-to. It's gonna have one slope, open front, and I'm gonna put chain uh, fence on the front side so that they have somewhere to walk until I get them old enough where I can turn them out in the pasture. So all I did is I took uh, uh, 20 foot two by fours, I cut them down to 12 footers. So two of them will be fully extended to 12 foot, and your inside pieces are going to be 11 foot 9. Screwed them together with two screws. I like these three and a half uh, hardened screws. It's got a star head and a torx head, like a decking screw. But they're like grade 8, they're hardened. So I, I love these things. You can use them for anything. And then when I'm done, I can just back all the screws out of the frame and put them back in my thing and use them for another project. I put my box together just like that. Then I take a form pin like this. Now I take a number, an even number. My fence is nice and straight because I put a string line on it when I build it. So I just come off, you know, whatever, 100 inches or whatever I want. I want to be able to take a tractor around the back side of this thing. So, you know, just under nine foot, by eight foot's fine. I went 100 inches just because it felt right. 100 inches off the fence stake a pin. So I come 16 foot off that pin because I'm two foot offset outside of that corner and I'm gonna be two foot outside of this corner. It's a 12 foot box plus two plus two 16 foot. So I come 16 foot and I sink a pin 100 inches off my fence or whatever you want it to be. And I'll take a string line and I'll run a string from pin to pin nice and tight. And that gives me the starting point for how I make my box. So I take this corner and I bring it over to the line. I take this corner, I bring it over to the line. And this is like a miniature pool building. So this two by four box, this outside is what my metal sheeting is gonna go to. So my post is gonna sit on the inside of this. And then these are my purlings. This is gonna run up the side of it, run horizontal. Then you screw your panels to it. This is not gonna be my floor. This is what I wanna kinda of show you. It's kind of a neat thing. Uh, I don't know how many people uh, do this. I haven't seen it much. So what I do is uh, once I get that strung down, nice and tight, I bring this outside edge over to the line. And I put a form pin two foot off that outside corner because when you go to dig your hole, you don't wanna hit that form pin. That's your layout pin. So I go ahead and I'll, I'll pin it here one in close to the middle, but I gotta offset my middle about 16, 18 inches so I don't hit my hole. Then I come to the corner and I offset that as well. So three pins, and I go a center pin here, offset, corner pin, offset, center pin, offset, corner pin, offset. That way, I can uh, pin this thing to the ground nice and tight. Doesn't have to be level. This is just an outside box. 
to hold my uh, post once I dig my hole. So once I get the, the back pinned down, I don't pin anything else yet. I get the, I take a frame and square. It's only a 12 foot by 12 foot box. I wouldn't do this on a bigger one. This is just, I mean, 14 foot, probably max I go on it. Take your frame and square. And from that back wall is fixed. You come to this bar wall, put your square on it, and you adjust it over to where it sits square. And you go ahead and pin that corner to the ground. Pin that corner to the ground. And make sure all four of your corners are pinned to the ground. And I'll angle this. And I've sight straight down on top of this outside. where the center of the head of that screw is the top of this outside corner. Now do it two screws on each corner. So when I go to run my string line to set my middle pin, that's gonna already put me over the center. Then I come here and then I'll run, I'll run two screws, one this way, one this way, and I'll run a tight line box all the way around. So I already know my four corners are square, and I'll look down this center line, and I'll put another pin in the middle here. So I'll push this over with my foot, drive the pin down in here, and then these four pins have holes in them, like this. I don't know if you guys can see the holes. When you stake that down, I stake that head level with the top, and then if I want to use the last one, I'll bring it down into about here. And I'll run a screw in that hole in there and it pins that to the ground on my string line, perfectly straight, perfectly square. So I do that on all four sides, pin all my middles down. Now this box is perfectly square, perfectly pinned to the ground. And then I'll lay the box out. I'll take my tape measure. If you're using six by sixes, it's a five and five eighths because it's treated. If it's a two by four, it's three and five eighths because it's treated. Your standard non-treated would be three and a half, just like a stud. So I'll come here, my box is 12 foot. So I'll come over from a corner, mark 72 inches, six foot. That gives me my center. Then I'll pull off one and three quarter inches one way. I'll make a mark. It gives me the outside of my first post. I'm doing three posts down each side. So you got corner, middle, corner, middle, corner, middle, corner, middle, okay? So then once I get that first one marked, that outside, I pull my tape measure from outside to the line, make a mark, X ahead, that's where the post goes. Same thing, come down to this corner. Pull that same number, mark, X ahead. And I go all the way around like that. My corners are gonna be where my corners are gonna be. And I go ahead and I'll dig the outside and the inside of where that post is gonna lay out. Outside, inside, just kind of score the ground so give me a marker, because I don't like wasting money on paint. I'd rather just mark it with my hoe. All the way around. And then what I can do is now all my pins are in the ground. So I take all my screws out of those pins, I lift this box up and out, set it down, and now I can go ahead and post hole dig all of my holes out, and they'll be perfectly laid out, perfectly where I need it to go. Once they're all uh, laid out, I'll take the box, set it right back down, run the same screws in the same holes, it'll be perfectly square, perfectly straight. And then when I go to set my post, I go ahead and pre-run two screws in that two by four edge where my post is gonna lay out. So when I set my post in the hole, I can plumb it up, I run them two screws in and it'll hold it perfectly where it needs to be. And then I can go ahead and run my kicker on the outside. It's just an awesome way to lay out a pole building because it holds that post exactly where it needs to be, especially if you're standing them up by yourself, it's the way to go. So um, I stake two pins down, two foot off of the actual, uh, you hush it. I'm not talking to you right now. <coughs> and I come down here, 16 foot. Whoa, that was, that was naughty. That'll be cut out.
Oh. That works. That's a lot, honey. Huh? That's a lot. That's what people want to see. How do you know what people want to see? Because people that don't know how to build buildings want it. They want it longer. They want more specifics. They want closer shots of how to do that. Did you show them that? Yeah, I think. No? I think so. Because that's key right there. That'll save you time. Otherwise, otherwise you got to put a pin offset, pin offset. That's two, four, six, eight pins. That's eighty dollars in pins you got to buy to do offsets. And then now uh, you then you got to take the line down. And it's just not the way to go.